the former two-time heavyweight world champion, Iron Mike Tyson! From what I can remember from the day I was born, it was always hard times, welfare, not much food, no money, crime infested neighborhoods, murders, um, pimps, prostitutes, um, drugs, and um, it was um, survival of the fittest. And um, I had an older brother who was five years older than me, so he didn't spend much time around the house. He was in the prog programs. He was, um, he was very smart and intelligent. He was a special kid on the block that was always in school. And um, me and my sister got caught up in the street life. So um, I was bullied a lot as a kid. I used to have pigeons. And uh, one particular time, some bully grabbed one of my pigeons and ripped his head off. And that was the first time I ever got into a fight. And I, and I kind of like won. I was young, like nine, but I kind of like won. And um, I like fighting ever since because it gave me attention. People would say, hey, you that guy that beat that big kid up. You were that guy. And I was like, everybody knew me from that, that incident. And so after that, older kids would bring other kids from different neighborhoods around my neighborhood. And they would pay us to fight each other. And that's how I started fighting. I probably had, wow, in my life I probably had 400 fights. Oh, I've been drugs since I was nine years old. Wow, what kind of drugs yeah. back then? Cocaine, marijuana, alcohol, nine. liquor. Because when I was younger, you know, my mother who wasn't educated on drugs and alcohol, even though know, she'd been in college, in order to perhaps get me to go to sleep, I was making a lot of noise, she would give me alcohol. Wow. Thinking I would go to sleep, you know, yeah. at that time. And so um, I started getting into a lot of trouble. By the time I was 12, I was arrested probably 40 times. Yeah. Everybody in the juvenile and the police um, department knew my name. Everybody, I was, you know, I was a regular. And so eventually I, they sent me away, and I was in this place. They sent me there for two years. And so I'm there, and um, eventually I get shipped away to another reformatory upstate New York. And I meet this gentleman named Bobby Stewart, who's a former professional fighter. Not a big time fighter, but just a former professional fighter. Four, ten round fights, never big time. And he, every weekend, he started, um, he would box with the kids. And then one, uh, one um, particular day, he boxed me, and he beat the shit out of me. But I took the beat, and he hit me in the stomach. I fell down, I got back up, but he kept beating the shit out of me. But I took it, and he thought that was. Um, a badge of courage and so he, he, he started boxing he started teaching me how to box and then um eventually i was what 13 then i became too good you know i never experienced love my love was hurting people yeah. the more people i hurt the more love i receive yeah and um it just was the time in my life i grew up and i mean I, I lived that life and i received love and i saw um what love done when once i became involved with my wife and we started having kids and even though i had children before i'd never been in a relationship when i was totally um dedicated to just like i wasn't fighting to be the best fighter i could i wanted to be the best father and the best husband i could totally be yes. well let me say about myself you know what i've experienced because i can only speak on myself my whole life uh, lived with all my ego just i was about I, I was i had a i was a megalomaniac with a low self-esteem you know um, if you if you said something, you know if you said something, I always say I'm nobody, I'm nobody. But if you but if it's something I want to accomplish, I'm the greatest. I'm a god. I can still accomplish something. But as far as my perspective on myself, I'm shit. Look at the life I come from. Even though I'm making all the money in the world, but look at me, my mother, my father, their sex works. What the fuck am I? Who am I? I'm a piece of shit. But I'm the highest paid athlete in the world. I'm the baddest man so called on the planet. But that's the low self esteem that um, I guess that I received. So I guess that's what cuts worked on my ego. My ego is out of this world. I used to, um, other people have to, I thought people should carry me. I shouldn't walk. It was just, but that's all I had to succeed. Yeah. 
I didn't have no perspective of myself. I used to look at my idol, Jack Dempsey, all these guys, Kid Chocolate, and I watched what they did. I watched what they said. Sometimes I said things that are really crude. You know what I mean? That's, that's ironic sometimes. But I said because my hero said, they said it in um, 1902. So it probably was, you know, they, by, the time, by the time they got into the press in America, they had 100 fights since then. But right now, they ain't, with the way the world is, as soon as you say something, automatically it's around the world. So I would tell people that these guys are kids, I'm immortal, they can never beat me, how dare them challenge. And I would just say all these dreadful things, that's because when I had low self esteem. Yeah. I would always talk down about others, I'll kill you next time. Yeah. And it was just all because I was afraid of losing. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. I'm one, from custom models' perspective, I look at myself as nothing. I mean, it's pale. And I'm willing to do anything to myself to improve to be the best. I'm, using, I'm willing to sacrifice my body. I'm willing to sacrifice my psychological health to just be the best in the world. And that's what really sacrifices you. really have to sacrifice your life, regardless if it's a marriage. Sometimes you have to sacrifice your life for a marriage or sacrifice your life for a goal you want to accomplish. And that's the goal that I, the rules that I've always taken, is sacrifice and be objective.